Hey guys, this is Blake from Blake Sanctum, retro site for retro games. I'm bringing to you today a really, really brilliant mod. Uh, it's Babylon 5 for Civilization 4. And uh, those Babylon 5 fans out there will know that uh, there is no official Babylon 5 games out there. We really got, you know, screwed over and mi we missed out on... Um, on you know a lot of fun but fortunately the modding community has created a lot of uh, awesome games and so you know the uh, the official Sierra game that never got released has had various fan versions of it made in uh, in uh, various game engines to recreate the sort of fighter uh, earth force fighter experience which are, I've got some videos on my account of them um, like uh, Babylon 5 I've found her, that's really good that one, and um, there's mods for like Homeworld and various other ones, but there hasn't, you know, there isn't much in the way of strategy, and I'm a big strategy gamer, and uh, ever since I was a boy watching this show, I've always sort of dreamed of being able to sort of play a, a strategy game where I could, you know, found the Earth Alliance and reach out into the stars and uh, meet the Minbari and the Centauri and uh, w wage war against the shadows and all that kind of stuff, and... Um, you know, there's, there, there hasn't been anything out there that allowed me to do that until these days. And if, you know, there, there's... It depends whether you're a turn-based strategy gamer or a real-time strategy gamer. If you like real-time strategy, then um, there's an excellent Babylon 5 mod for Sins of a Solar Empire, which I hope to do a video of at, at uh, some point. But if you're a turn-based strategy game, which I would put myself more so into, although I still love both, um, then this is it. Basically, Civilization 4, for those who are not that familiar with it, um, had a couple of add-on packs, and the second add-on pack, Beyond the Sword, added a total conversion uh, mod called The Final Frontier, which basically converted the Civ 4 game into a space game. So instead of uh, uh, grassland and uh, water and forest and all that, it all got replaced with space, with nebulas and asteroid belts, and cities became solar systems with lots of multiple planets in there that you could develop. And so, of course, naturally, it wasn't long before the modding community got their hands on it and started doing Star Trek mods and Babylon 5 mods. And I've already just done a video of the Star Trek one, which I'll make sure I put links to uh, at the uh, in the uh, end card of this video for those uh, for those tricky fans who want to check that out. But uh, thankfully, someone's made a Babylon 5 one, and uh, it is utterly brilliant. I've been playing it for the last few days, and I'm just having a blast. So I'm going to show you guys what it's all about. So let me see uh, now. One of, the, uh, one of the unfortunate things, though, about this one compared to the Star Trek one is that what makes the Star Trek mod so good is that it's full of scenarios recreating some of the most epic um, battles in the history of the shows um, and a whole bunch of battles that you never got to see. And sadly, there aren't any scenarios with this one. All you can do is basically play a sandbox game where you're starting right from the beginning and you've got to carve your own story and way throughout the galaxy, which is awesome, but... I, it would be awesome if at some point some talented Civ 4 modder out there who's a Babylon 5 fan came up with some mods because there's th sorry with some scenarios for this mod because there's so many cool things they could do like the you know the Earth Minbari War the Great Shadow War with the Volons and the Shadows and, and all that kind of stuff and just the Earth Civil War you know there's all these brilliant scenarios it'd be so much fun to play but uh, anyway so I'm going to show you this game oh and I should also apologise for the music um, unfortunately you know the this game has a brilliant, this mod has a brilliant soundtrack, like it's full of Babylon 5 songs, although for some reason when I first played it, it was playing regular Final Frontier songs, but then at some point it just switched and started playing lots of Babylon 5 stuff, uh, it might have been a bug or something, but anyway, once they kick in, they're brilliant, I mean, when you're sitting there having epic battles um, with Hyperion ships against raiders and stuff, and you're listening to the Babylon 5 soundtrack, it's, it's such an awesome feeling. Um, but unfortunately, those songs trigger the co YouTube copyright, um, and I don't want that on my account, so I've had to disable music. So I'm just playing some crappy old MIDI, some um, Babylon 5 MIDI files, so I apologize for the music. I thought I've got to have something in the background, so I've put them on. But uh, trust me, the music in the mod is way better than what you're hearing right now. So let's get on with the checking out the game. So go play now, and there's a few set thing. There's a default Final Frontier scenario, so ignore them. The ones you want are all these ones that start with Babylon 5. So you say you could do a spiral galaxy. You can set like the quality of the, um, the size of the galaxy, the quality of the planets, and 
look at this, you can play as quite a few different enterprises. You've got the uh, Brakiri, the Centauri Republic, you can play uh, as different emperors, good old Londo. Uh, the Dilgar, they're in the game. The Drazi, of course the Earth Alliance, the evil Earth Alliance, or uh, John Sheridan, or the, um, I think she was the president after Sheridan uh, cleaned up the place. Um, you can be aggressive members of the League. Was it Missouri Tal and Click <laughs> Sil Tucker? <laughs> I, I don't know. It's been so long since I've seen the show, I can't remember them off by heart. I, I'm just trying to read them. Uh, oh, I remember these guys, they were the Carrion Eaters, uh, the Volna, uh, Sheila, Milashi, Voktal. So they're the balanced ones, and they've got the passive, passivist ones, the Kalika, Kwazal, Mizra, and. Uh, Fasha, and then of course you got the Minbari Federation. You can be Valen or um, Dukat, Delen, and Nerun. The Nan, you can be uh, Angry Jakar, Pacifist Jakar, or Citizen Jakar, as they put it there, and uh, his uh, successor Nafar. Uh, so I'll, um, I've got a save game I'll be playing as the Earth Alliance. That's what I'm going to show you, so I can show you ships and things, because that's. That's like I said, there's no scenario, so I thought, to do a good video, I've got to play a game and then show you that. But I'll quickly show you a game start. So we'll just do, say, Minbari, and I'll go as Delenn and uh, start this game. Just to show you what it looks like. You really do, you know, it's bare bones. Uh, you've got to, uh, you don't get gifted much. Unlike the Star Trek one, where, you know, you start some of those scenarios and straight away you've got galaxies and sovereigns, and you can see all the best techs and things are... Uh, uh, already, uh, we don't have that in this one, so we've got to discover them, explore and discover, and conquer, all by ourselves. The Babylon Project was our best, last hope for peace. It failed. Susan Ivanova. So we're starting as the Mimbar. We're going to starting uh, laser weapons tech, and uh, this is our. Oh, yeah, we get the final frontier tutorial crap, and with this we get to early Leshath. So this looks like um, one of the uh, the ships we see in that uh, the first Great War, when we got a glimpse of that in that awesome two-part time, time travel episode where uh, Sinclair becomes a Valen, and um, thousands of years ago in the first Great War. So that looks like one of those ships that you start with, and uh, this is all we can see. Got this nice sort of flowing. I like the way the stars all flow, um, even if it's not necessarily realistic. This is our starting solar system, Minbar. Get some tutorial screens there, which I'm just going to skip. And uh, as you can see, very different to what you used to in Civ. You, instead of just building buildings for a city, you're now building buildings on individual planets. So we've currently got this planet selected, but look at this. You can select... Oh, come here. Another planet. And oh, it's out of range at the moment, so hang on. We'll, uh, we'll do this one. Select that, and suddenly you've got a new build menu. So it's... Uh, you know, it's really cool. So every time you capture a star system, you're not just getting like a one city, you're getting a whole bunch of cities in the one. And uh, at the moment we can only colonize and move population using these plus and minus buttons um, to the inner planets. Uh, because you, civilization games have that whole culture influence thing and that gets bigger and allows you to sort of have cultural victories over other races if they be if they fall under your uh, influence um, but at this early stage your influence is more about just expanding it enough so you can access the outer planets and the solar system because once this blue area expands out here it gives you access to these planets and there's some good ones here like these ones there's like two food not much uh, industry and gold, so they're good for growing, and growing is everything. Look at that one, three food, that's a really good planet, and we don't have access to that uh, at the moment, so you've got to expand their influence, and you can do that by manipulating science, influence, and um, and the money-making stuff, and obviously building buildings that improve that as well. Commercial satellite, that improves the little blue cross there, that's influence, gives you some money. What's this? Minbari casts. Gives you some extra food. Oh, that would have been useful to have a human equivalent of that. Oh, I've been struggling for food in my game as the humans. But anyway, um, so we got the yeah, mining facility. Yeah, no, well, actually, there is a human equivalent now that I think about it. It's just a very different looking building. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's not much when you start with. So, you know, if this had been my video, it would have been pretty boring because I would have been like, yeah, here's one ship, here's one solar system, thanks, bye. But nope, I've got a save game. So, I'm going to show you some stuff. I'm going to show you some battles. Got some cool shit. 
So, uh, let me see. Let's go to, um, oh, I load up this old save game here. So this is the Earth Alliance, and uh, at this stage I've sort of got a few systems. I've got some, um, the Earth Alliance version of a scout ship, they call it the Oracle, and it's a great design actually, because it's totally, I think it's totally made up for this, unless they got it from some fan site or tech manual or something, because I don't recall ever seeing it in the show, but uh, see, it kind of has that Hyperion look. It's also got a bit of the Omega sort of square front look to it, so it's a nice design, I like it. And see, it says Oracle on the side. It's good detail on the models, so... Uh, this is a battle here where, uh, as you can see, it's good old raiders. Remember, they were the primary uh, villain of the first season, fighting those raiders. So, And it's constant, actually. I'm constantly fighting off raiders in this game. So it's very action-packed. Because I've heard that there's a few bugs where the main races don't expand as quickly as they should. And I have noticed that. Um, I've only met one so far, and that's the Centauri. Which is <laughs> fitting, actually, with the lore of the series. Because it wasn't at the Centauri that they, uh, the Earth Alliance met first anyway. But, um, you know... They've only got a few systems, where well, I've got heaps, so, uh, you know, they do seem to be a bit slow, although perhaps up, upping the difficulty setting might um, might help that a bit. But either way, the Raiders keep you busy. So let's engage one. So I'm going to... It zooms in, it's pretty cool. I like it how the weapon fire comes out of the turrets. Bang. Bang get him. Got him. Oh, I nearly got killed then. Uh, your strength is like not just your attack power, but it's also your, your health. So like once you get towards zero, you die. So uh, he's uh, defeated them. Looks like he's picked up some uh, money and resources from the debris of those uh, pirates. But uh, I'm, yeah, there's the Centauri there. Uh, a little bit of him I can see. Lots of solar systems. I've been busy. Not sure if there's any other action going on in this particular save. Uh, oh, here we go. Look at this. I got um this. See that the Oracle I saw is only about six strength. It's more of a recon unit. This is something more powerful. The Sagittarius. So that's it's got 15 strength. Another sort of unique design not seen in the show. I don't think. Uh, nice detailing on there. It's got good firepower. Sadly, it looks like on this save game I've already opened fire, so I can't show you the, the ship in action, but it, it looks very similar to the other one when it fires. Uh, what else have I got here? There's another Sagittarius there, and... Oh, this is a cool ship. This is like a troop carrier ship, um, the Hermes. And so, yeah, you can uh, carry a few things on there. And, uh, and I think a lot of these ships, you can equip them with fighters. Right now, I've just got fighters protecting my systems. Like, if I go here, you can see I've got um, a fighter doing patrols. If I click here... See, I've got good old uh, uh, orbital defense satellites, which I'm sure we remember in the series when uh, President Clark uh, ordered Scorch Earth and uh, turned them on Earth. But um, I've also got this fighter here. Uh, this is like a basic fighter. I haven't got Star Furies yet, but they're, they're in there. They're in the, uh, the Civilopedia, so I'm looking forward to getting them and being able to send Star Fury squadrons out to attack anyone who comes near my colonies. I'll show you one in action, actually. I've got another save game. I'll show you guys. Because at the stage I'm at in my game, um, I've got I've just uh, I've got Hyperions. I haven't got to Omegas yet, sadly. I'd love to rock an Omega in this video for you, but sadly it's just taking too long, and I'd be playing the game for days, I think, before I get to them. So um, what I think I'll do is I'll do another video down the track when I've got like heaps of techs, I've encountered all the races, and I'm rolling around the galaxy with Omegas and Warlocks, and uh, you know kicking ass. But for the moment, the best I can show you guys is Hyperion. But I always love the Hyperion anyway. Look at it. Great detailing. And it fires differently to the other ships. And you actually see it coming out of the turret. So I'll fire on the these pesky raiders. Oh, and I should point out there's harder raiders too. They'll come at you with carriers and raiders coming out of the carriers, which is really cool. So that's another piece out of the first season of the show. Because I remember the raider carriers. So here we go. See, bigger weapons, and they're coming out of the turrets. Bang. Beautiful details, and what's this? Oh, we've got another one here. Now, I can show you a fighter in action. So, with a fighter, you do these hit and airstrike modes. So, I target... Oh, actually, I'll wait for the fighter. I'm going to use an orbital cannon first. The orbital cannons will actually fight directly, like, traditionally, by just simply, you know, um, aiming and shooting. But, um, uh, when, oh, sorry, they'll actually defend the planet when... The enemy attacks, but you can take pot shots at the enemy before they attack. So, this is using their special cannon. This is a big weapon. So watch this. Bang! 
that's weakened him. So he's looking very weak now. Now I'll use the fighter attack. I don't, I'm not sure, I think I have to get a certain technology or upgrade to allow fighters to actually kill enemies. I think they can only just sort of peck them down to a really low level at the start of the game, but we'll see. I'll do a, f a run on him. Bang. Oh, no, I killed him. Okay, so yeah, fighters can kill, whereas I think the batteries can't kill unless they're fighting directly. Their big cannon only basically really damages an enemy down to low levels, but can't kill them. So yeah, there's a bit of action for you guys, but um, you know, you can see there's uh, asteroids and nebula, and uh, I'll load up my latest save game, literally where I'm at at the moment, and I'll show you guys some more stuff, how it all works. <laughs> I'll show you some of the other units, because I can still show you Warlocks and stuff, because they're in the Civilopedia, and the Civilopedia has a nice sort of a 3D view of the ship, and you can spin it around and look at the details. I'll show you some alien ships as well. Alright, so as you can see, I've been busy. This is my latest save game. Obviously, these Star Lane things aren't really appropriate to the Babylon 5 universe, but they're just a part of the Civ. They're like roads in Civ, and they're part of the Final Frontier, and... In, st in the Star Trek mod, they called them, uh, was it, I think, transwarp conduits or something, or the Borg were using them. But uh, in here, they're just sort of, they just call them trade routes. They're basically space lane trade routes, uh, and they're very important to the game, so you've got to <laughs> break storyline immersion there. There's, I mean, I'm sure there's some equivalent in the Babylon 5 universe of direct trade routes, but they probably just go through um, hyperspace. Oh, and that does exist. Um, you can build um, jump gates, and uh, that will allow you to send units around... Um, to different parts of the galaxy in a matter of seconds, like entering a wormhole and stuff. Oh, and I got a star base, an early uh, basic star base here, protecting the star lanes, and that can, it's a powerful building that can take, so it's like 30 strength, and it can take pot shots at anything nearby. Very cool. What have I got? Uh, have I got anything else interesting happening? I've got lots of satellites and stuff. I'll show you actually a solar system where there's lots of activity, so we'll go to capital system, Sol, and uh, as you can see, lots of cool stuff, there's my um, Hyperion, this is like an early version of the Hyperion that I've been rocking, there's a, uh, a heavily upgraded version that comes later, Sagittarius, you saw that, I've got an early Avenger, which is, seems to be some, oh yeah, it's a carrier ship that can carry the fighters, and uh, got missiles, fighters, frigate, planetary assault ship, oh sorry, sorry, yeah, I think that's the planetary assault ship, whereas the Hermes is just a little, uh, What's this? Transport. Okay. I guess it's both then. I don't know. Um, and you've got ground pounders to protect your planets, construction ships to build the roads and star bases, and a colony ship. And uh, yeah, you can see the different planets. I love it how, see the little satellites spinning around that I built? And uh, I've built some other wonders that uh, help your military stuff, and they float around the solar system. So I like it how you can see that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. It's, uh, yeah, there's uh, lots of cool sort of Babylon 5 style buildings I've built, uh, some of them are just from Final Frontier, but other ones are unique to Babylon 5. I'm, um, where's the, uh, hang on, go to the capital. There's, uh, there it is. I'm, I'm currently worshipping the first ones, because <laughs> there's, um, Civ 4 kind of had these, um, religion ideologies, and thankfully the Babylon 5 mod makers have taken advantage of that. Like, if you go here, look at this you got these various religions you can go you got I'm currently revering the first ones they're my chosen one and I can then use that as sort of part of my culture to try and lure um, other races towards me because um, they'll support my religion and I'm the source of it and then you got the hand you got chaos which would be the shadows unity the be um, not sure who would be that one order would be I suppose be the Vorlons but uh, yeah they're all these wonderful um, things from the show. So I love it how they've done that. It's really cool. So we'll get out of this. Uh, what else do I can I show? You? What's my Hyperion? Oh yeah, Hyperion's currently protecting um, that you saw in action the other save. He's currently protecting my um, construction ships in this asteroid belt because the enemy just keeps coming uh, from all directions. So he's been blasting away. He's had lots of upgrades because he's had lots of battles. He's uh, yeah, 21 and uh, got lots of extra skill things. That's what's really cool. The Civ 4 has that all that whole upgrade system for all its units, and that's been brought across to Final Frontier and then brought across into the Babylon 5 mod. So your ships have so many upgrades, and some of them are unique to Babylon 5, which is cool. A little bit of pirate activity going on there, I think. 